But I felt there was an, an important piece to this that Katie could add, and that's why she's here today. So I'm going to try to get out of her way in a, in a little bit so she can just run with what God is showing her. You know, and uh, it is how the unhealed saw conditions. Boy, unhealed saw conditions. Because from the traumas we've suffered, from the iniquities that are in the blood that have wounded our souls, give the devil legal rights to bring accusations against us in the court of heaven because, because those soulless things, when they control us, the devil knows when it's his program making us act out, not God, not Jesus. And so now he has a legal right. So I felt like, you know, if we don't get our soul healed, the accusation in the court of heaven will just pile up. You know, and so I felt I, we needed to, we cannot conclude the series without having an apostle on soul healing. This is what she has done. She has gone to, she has gone war over the issue of soul, of, of soul restoration. And I'm glad, Katie, you have not dropped the mantle on the healing of the soul because mm. you've been pressed by some people. You know, you talk too much about the soul. But I tell you, Katie, getting around you and reading your, some of your book, I realize there is no way around the, soul, the unhealed soul. No, it's absolutely true. Um, uh, look, I mean, our spirit's born again, right? It's, our spirit is perfect. So your spirit man can't do anything wrong. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what does that leave behind? That leaves behind your soul. So your soul is the culprit in your life for everything. Your soul is the reason why you're having issues in relationships because you're wounded in your soul. So you're speaking to people and, and hearing things from people through the twistedness, through the woundedness in your soul. That's why sometimes you'll say something really nice to somebody and they'll think that you insulted them. I can't believe you said that to me. And you're like, what? I just complimented you. But, you know, they're hearing it through their wounds. That's why there's so much strife, right? That's why people, people will sit there and say the meanest things to you because they're wounded and out of the, out of the heart, the mouth speaks, you know, what's in our heart, is, our mouth speaks out of it, right? So we have to have our heart, which actually that word heart in the New Testament means the soul. So what's ever in your soul is what you're going to talk about. You can always tell how, how wounded somebody is by what they talk about. So it's really important that we have our souls healed. The Bible says you will prosper. That's your finances. That word there actually means prosperity of a business and be in health even as your soul prospers. So it's like, wow, you're going to prosper in your money. You're going to prosper in your, your relationships. You're going to prosper in your church. You're going to prosper in your marriage. And you're going to prosper in your physical body. What? How does it happen? Even as... Your soul prospers, okay? And this is an important thing to know. And we have to understand something that, that sin in our lives has caused us to be wounded, either worse, our, our own sin or someone's sinned against us, and trauma in our lives has caused us to be wounded, and every single person on the planet has gone through trauma, if not daily trauma. I've never seen so much trauma in my life as what is in the planet right now. Every day is another trauma, drama, baby mama. Something's going on every single day, okay? And with the pandemic and businesses closing down and everything else, you know, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. Those things wound the soul. So let's look at some examples of that. I mean, think about sin, okay? In Isaiah 30, 26, in the Amplified Classic, it says that God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds that came because of their sin. Sin wounds the soul. So think about, wow, every day it's impossible for us to keep the whole law. So every day we slip up, whether intentionally or we let ourselves go out of the anger in our soul. And we, we allow ourselves to roll into that sin as we open our mouth and yell and scream at somebody or, or start gossiping or, or, you know, judging or being critical to somebody. Every day we're, we're sinning. And those sins, especially if they become chronic, chronic, they will wound your soul. And then suddenly you wonder why you feel sick. You wonder why your body's in pain. You wonder why you opened yourself up to getting the COVID. I'll just give an example, and I won't use a name, but a, a very famous person that I know, which is a, a wonderful, God-loving person. So as I say this story, don't think that, it's, that this person isn't. Okay, um, got the COVID. Okay, so we started praying. 
And um, they gave us a call, wow, you know, I have like 104 degree temperature, I think I'm going to die. That is how sick I feel. I, I am coughing, I can hardly breathe. You know, I've got body pain, it, it's horrible. So we all went into prayer. And I'm praying all day, right? Like, just Holy Spirit, show me, Holy, Holy Spirit, show me. We release power, we release healing. Uh, you know, um, we release soul healing. Because I know that if somebody needs to be healed in their body, it's usually connected to a issue, a wound in their soul that sometimes came from sin. Okay, so I'm praying, and finally it was like, it got to the night, so I got into the bathtub, and you know, sometimes when you relax, you can hear the Holy Ghost better, instead of in panic mode. So I was relaxed, I got in the bathtub, and I got a word for that person. And what it was, is it was a name, a name of a person that had attacked that, my friend's family, and said things about them, and stolen money from them, and everything else. And as soon as I heard that name, I knew that my friend had gotten offended and started maybe even talking about that person like, oh, I can't stand that person. Oh, I can't believe that that person's doing that. I can't believe now what have they done next? Now they've stolen from us. Now they've done this. You know, and you think, well, rightfully so somebody would respond like that after another person has stolen from them, talked about them. It's hard not to. Our challenge as believers is not to react to a difficult person or trying situation by getting into sin. Because why? It wounds us. And so as soon as I heard that person's name, I knew my friend had gotten offended. Offense is a sin that wounds your soul. So I began to repent for her. The Bible says we can do that because this is part of the soul healing process. You first apply the blood. I began to repent for her. Remember what Jesus told the disciples. He said, uh, <clears throat> uh, whosoever sins you forgive, they will be forgiven. Right. Whosoever sins you don't forgive, they will not be forgiven. So I began to repent for my friend for being offended at this person. Right now, I didn't even call her and tell her, I'm just doing this. So I spent like, you know, an hour. I'm walking around the house doing stuff, but in my mind and out loud, I'm praying as I go. Father, in the name of Jesus. I put the blood of Jesus on my friend's sin. I intercede for her right now. Jesus, you said I have the right to, to, for, to have her sins forgiven by interceding for her. And so I put the blood on her sin. I'm just doing that. And then, you know, and then I began, I laid down and I began to pray uh, for the Holy Spirit to release dunamis power into your soul to heal it. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. So anyway, I go to bed. And I wake up in the middle of the night. And I see the, I actually see a vision of power flowing towards her direction. Because that's what happened. Don't think your prayers aren't working. You may not be able to see in the spirit, but sometimes God will allow you to be able to witness the movement of your prayer right at that moment. So my prayers and my decrees were doing what they do. Moving. They never don't move. You just think they don't because you feel stuck. Okay? So I see the power flowing towards her. So then I go back to sleep. I'm, and, you know, I would. I had a soaking um, disc on. I'm, I wake up. I'm praying to it. And then I'm falling asleep. Waking up, praying to it. And then I wake up in the morning, and she had this horrible fever, right? She, she woke up, her husband, a couple times and said, you may have to take me to the hospital. I think I'm dying. And... Um, so I wake up in the morning, and I had been watching, sometimes I'll soak to watching, um, like, the Gospel of John movie. It's all about the book of John. It's totally per, per Bible, that they all the dialogue is per the Bible. So sometimes I just do that because I can see it with my eyes, hear it with my ears, and interact with it. And I had been watching it the night before as I was praying for her and just interacting with it. And so I woke up in the morning. I get up. I go into the bathroom. And I pushed the movie where it stopped, and it came up to the part where the centurion showed up and came up to Jesus and said, my son has a fever and he's dying. And Jesus says, go, your son will live. And, it's, and, and it opened up right to that, and I went, huh? And I texted, I said, you are totally healed. And she called up, she goes, I just woke up like 10 minutes ago. The fever is totally broken. I have no symptoms. I'm totally healed of COVID. But do you understand what happened, right? You understand what happened? 
The sin let it in. She had been afflicted by this person attacking her family for so long. Because this person's a good Christian. My friend's a good Christian. Um, a good believer. She loves the Lord. But she finally broke weak. I want you to hear that. The enemy will wear you. The enemy will use a person or a situation to wear you down. So even if you played it cool in the beginning, which a lot of people don't as Christians, they, they blow their stack right away. But even people who have developed steadfastness, patience, perseverance, will finally break weak and start getting offended and mad and bitter and everything else. And that's exactly what the devil wanted you to do. You don't get it. One of the biggest assignments of Satan is to just wear you down so that he can finally, at the very least, but at the very most, get your soul wounded. Because, see, you don't understand. What, what the Bible says is that when your soul is wounded, you now have something in you that's in common with Satan, so he has power over you. Jesus said that in John 14, 30. He said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power power over me see well that in common area is your soul he said he said he has nothing in me that's in common with him so he has no power over me the devil will have no power over you if you have nothing in you that's in common with him so many times, one of the biggest strategies the devil uses against you is to get your soul wounded. It's like if you, if, you're, you know, if you don't have something already in common with him, which many of us do, right, either from our ancestral bloodline or uh, something else, a trauma we've been through or something else, he will create a trauma. He will create a stressor. He will create an offense, and he'll keep on working you and working you and working you through that person in that situation until you finally blow a cap. Did you hear what I said? Oh, this is big. Which means if you can remember that thing, that little bit of information alone, you're going to reduce your warfare by about 90%. If you can remember in the middle of the, ah, if you can remember not to do that and go, oh, I know what you're doing, Satan. <sighs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you can just be at peace, I got to remind myself of this truth. So I want you to remember, if you take away one point from today's broadcast, it's this, is be at peace. It says, in peace possess ye your soul. The Bible's telling you that for a reason. Because the Bible knows if you stay in peace, you won't allow your soul to be wounded by the traumatic situation, the stressful situation you are in. Thus, you will eliminate the demonic warfare that will come from it. You get me, right? <clears throat> you get me. Look, I'll prove my point through a story um, in the Bible, okay? Jesus is on his way to the region of the Gerasenes, okay? What hits? A storm, a storm. The waves were, it says, were pounding on the boat till the boat was almost filled. It said it was a storm of, quote, hurricane proportion, okay? Almost sunk the boat. Jesus is asleep. Mm. He's asleep in the storm. 
What are the disciples doing? Oh, my God. Wake up, Master. Don't you care that we're perishing? You know, half the time when we're in a storm and a crisis, you know who we blame? God. We think he doesn't care. And we start accusing him. And they got all worked up. They thought they were going to die. They woke up, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? And he's like, oh, my gosh. So he rebukes the storm, right? He rebukes the storm. Peace. Peace. Be still. Be muzzled. Hush up. And the storm stops. Now, why is this crucial? Because, see, they were going to someplace special. They were going to the region of the Gerasenes when this happened, when the storm came. Now, what, what happened in the region of the Gerasenes? They met a, a man with the spirit of legion in him. Now, remember, it says that Jesus got out of the boat, and there met him, you know, a man out of the tombs, who night and day dwelled among the tombs, who uh, had, his, had been living among the tombs. It, it, it said dwelling among the tombs, that he was shrieking, screaming, beating and bruising himself, cutting himself with stones. And as soon as Jesus got out of the boat, this, this man with this spirit met him. Now, this spirit... When it sees Jesus, runs up to Jesus, throws himself at Jesus' feet and says this, Oh, Jesus, what do we have in common? I implore you, do not torment me. Okay, now remember what Jesus said in John 14, 30. The prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. So here, that devil is, is basically witnessing to the truth of what Jesus said in John 14, 30. He runs up to Jesus, and he goes, wow, look at you, Jesus. You're, like, um, you, you're a man I've never seen a man like you before that doesn't have anything in you, in your soul, that's in common with me. So not only can I not torment you, but you, Jesus, can torment me. Please don't torment me. Now, check it out. So he's basically saying, wow, that was my legal right to get at all men, is if they had something in them that was in common. But this man, Jesus, doesn't have anything in him that was in common, even though I just made him go through a storm in order to get here. Do you think that storm just, like, happened? Come on. It didn't happen. It was a demonically created storm. How do I know? Well, let's look at it. Go to... Go to Mark 4 in the Amplified Classic, and we're going to look at it. And I'm going to prove to you, the demons make storms, hello, to try to get you to be wounded. And you have to recognize that and say, oh, I'm not going to let this happen to me. Okay, so I'm reading from Mark 4 in the Amplified Classic, AMPC. It says on the same day, and I'll show you, and I want you to bring up, if you, got, if you guys can in the booth, bring up verse 39 when I tell you. It says that Jesus left to go, he says, let us go over to the other side of the lake, which is where? The region of the Gerasenes where Legion lived, okay? Then it says, in leaving the throng, he took with them the boat which he, which he was sitting in and then the other boats that were with him. See, there were other people involved in this storm, too, not just Jesus' boat. And it says, then a furious storm of hurricane proportions arose, and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was already becoming filled. But he himself was in the stern of the boat, asleep on the weather cushion, and they woke him and said, Master, do you not care that we're perishing? Now, let's look at it. This is verse 39. Can we have it up on the board there? Perfect. It says this. And he arose and rebuked the wind... And said to the sea, hush now, be still, be muzzled. Okay, so first Jesus rebuked the wind. You know that that word rebuke is used when Jesus rebukes what? Demons. Why is he rebuking the sea and the waves and the wind? He's talking to the sea like it's a demon. Why? Because a demon spoke this storm into existence to try to stop Jesus from getting to his destination or try to wound him before he got there. Okay, now watch. Then it says this. He says, and he said, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, hush now, be still, be muzzled. Now, I want to prove this. 
we're going to go jump over to Mark 1, where Jesus runs into a demon at the synagogue. He's teaching at the synagogue, and he runs into a demonic spirit. Okay, and it says that this is in Mark 1, verse 25. Jesus sees him. The spirit says this to him. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, same language of him, what he did to the storm, and said, hush up. Remember what he told the storm? Hush be muzzled, be gagged. He told the storm, hush up, be muzzled. And he rebuked it. Do you see it? It's the same exact language that Jesus sped to the storm, which means what? Legion made that storm, baby. He's a storm maker. Jesus. He spoke that storm into existence. Just like how Satan created a whirlwind that took out all Job's children. They can make storms in the natural. Meaning these demons can work through people. They can work through situations. They can work through pandemics. They can work through whatever to get you wounded. Come on. So that by the time you finally get to your destination on the region of the Gerasenes, whatever region that is, you will not have authority over that devil because Jesus said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. The devils are going to speak storms into existence to get you wounded, so by the time you get to your assignment, you have something in you that's in common with them, and you will have no power over them, but they'll have power over you. You see what I'm saying? This is incredible. This is really, really, really powerful. You know, I'm seeing why Katie, because, you know, you, I travel around the world to do healing crusade and stuff like that. It's amazing some stuff we have I've gone through in terms of warfare trying to get there, but it was this demonic technology trying to have something in common so that when I get there, I'm so upset and frustrated, I'm already paralyzed to the demonic powers in the region. That's amazing. They're either trying to make you turn back. You know, the ultimate goal is stop the ships and make them turn back around. Like, okay, we'll make this storm, and then they'll say, oh, we're not going to make it. we got to go back to shore. You know? But then most Christians aren't like that. Most Christians will press through. They'll go, okay, this is the hardest thing ever, but I'm going to go do it. And I'm going to get there. And I'm going to press through. I'm going to press through. I'm going to press through. <laughs> but as they're doing that, they press through. They actually physically made it there, but they're completely wounded when they got there, so they've lost all authority. Okay, look, think about the demoniac. What's going on with him? It says three times he's dwelling among the tombs. Night and day he's among the tombs, dwelling among the tombs, in the mountains and in the tombs. I thought, when I read that, I thought, well, if the Bible says something three times, you got to pay attention to it. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, why did it say three times he's dwelling among the tombs? Okay. It, it's because of what the word tombs means and what the word dwelling means. The word tombs there means, and this is in the Thayers, a monument set up to cause a perpetual remembrance See, that's what a soul wound is. It's like a tombstone inside your soul. Come on, it sets up itself and causes you to perpetually remember that thing that happened to you. Come on. And you talk about it and you dwell on it. And you speak on it over and over and rehearsing the same story. Oh, then they did this, and then they did that, and then I said this, and then this happened, and then I lost that. You're dwelling among the tombs. You're dwelling in the pain of your past. When you do... If you know somebody that's doing that, they're dwelling among the tombs. 
You know, you know those people, you see them, they talk about the same thing over and over again. It's because that tombstone has set itself up inside them, in their soul, to cause them to perpetually remember that event. And that means that Legion has authority over them. How do I know? Because it says that he was dwelling among the tombs. That word dwell there in the Thayer says this. It's a metaphor for powers, powers like, like spirits, said to pervade, govern, and control the soul. Meaning Legion was, ever to, was able to pervade, govern, and control the soul of the demoniac, making him cut and beat and bruise himself and dwell among the tombs because he was dwelling out of the tombs. He was dwelling on the pain of his past. Did you hear what I said? Look, 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 look. Everybody wants to go up. I want a next level, next level. Next level, get your soul healed. Wow, that's it. Next level is get your soul healed. You know why? Because check it out. Legion was a regional demon. How do I know? Because he comes to Jesus. He says, oh, Jesus, what is there in common between us? Do not torment me. And then the next thing Jesus hears from him is this. And Jesus do not send us out of the region. He said that to Jesus. Please don't send us out of the region. Meaning that he was a spirit that had been assigned to control that whole region. Now we know that because it says that Jesus went over to the other side of the lake and stepped out of the boat. This is verse 1 of Mark 5. Onto the region of the Gerasenes. Jesus was going to take a region. The Bible makes it clear. So in order to take that region, he would have to take on a regional demon that was assigned to protect that region for the dark kingdom. But in order for Jesus to take that region from a regional demon that was over a dark kingdom, he had to do what? He had to first do what Legion himself said was true. Jesus, son of the most high God, what is there in common with you? Please don't torment me. He was saying, the reason why this dude named Jesus is going to be able to take this region is because there's nothing in him that's in common with me, so he has power over me and can torment me instead of me tormenting him. The devil gives us, uh, the demon himself gives us the secret to taking the region. Don't have anything in your soul in common with him. Now look, the demoniac wasn't the only person in this story to have tombs in their soul. Wasn't the only person dwelling among the tombs. The people of that region were also dwelling among the tombs. How do I know? Remember, the legion tells, tells to Jesus, he says, don't send us out of the region. Send us into the pigs. So Jesus casts him, him into the pigs. <clears throat> the pigs lose their mind. They run over the cliff and kill themselves. And the pig watchers, the herders, swine herders, were watching. They go, oh, my God. There goes all of our money. <laughs> they run into town, into the region there, the town that's in that region. Tell everybody what happened. All the people come out. They see what happened. They see the demoniac. It says they saw the demoniac sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And they saw Jesus, and they looked to Jesus, and they said this, Jesus, please leave our region. Now, think about it. Who's talking to Jesus both times through the people? The people said, Jesus, leave our region. And the demoniac said to Jesus, with legion speaking through him, don't send us out of the region. Who's talking to Jesus both times? Legion. Legion is not only in the demoniac. He's in all the people of that region because they were all dwelling 
among the tombs. They were all dwelling out of the pain and the situations and the traumas that they had experienced in their life. And that's what was giving that regional demon of legion the legal right to be in power over that region. You see, that's why we have to get our souls healed. But we have to get the people of the world. Healed in their soul. You want to kick out devils? They're just going to go into the next person right next to them. Until we get the souls of the world healed, we are not going to have dominion. Because these devils are getting their right to be over regions of land all over this planet. From They're getting their legal landing strip from the woundedness in people's souls in the regions that they've been assigned to. And so when we go into regions, we have to go in with a soul healing message. We can't, we can't move on from this message. Look, I have other messages. I do. I teach about a lot of different stuff. But with every time I speak anywhere, I always bring in soul healing. If I want to see miracles in a meeting, the very first session, I tell people if I go to a meeting, I have to have at least two sessions, if not more, and I have to build. And I start building by first getting people's soul heals. And then what happens is I see incredible miracles. I could show you hours, hours worth of video. Dr. Miles have seen them of metal coming out of people's bodies, proven by cops with metal detectors, proven by x-rays, proven by doctors, proven by everything else. All those metal miracles, you know how they start? Getting people healed in their soul. This is big. Now check it out. Once we get healed in our soul, we can then receive a regional mantle, a mantle that will give us authority to go into regions and take that region for the Lord. Let me prove it to you. Remember the demoniac. Jesus heals him. He delivers him of the spirit of legion. Now, I know that in that process, Jesus healed his soul. How do I know? Because the Bible says in Acts uh, 10.38 that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed with power, with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So God put an anointing on Jesus, the Holy Spirit and power, and he used it to heal all who are oppressed of the devil, and that includes the demoniac, because the demoniac was what? Oppressed of the devil. Many, many devils. Okay, so what's this anointing that Jesus had that he used to do miracles with? Okay, he got anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. That word power there is the Greek word dunamis. It means, it means this, listen, excellence of soul. Okay, see, Dunamis means the power to perform miracles, power and influence that belongs with riches and wealth, but it also means excellence of soul. So when Jesus would go around, you see him doing all these miracles, right? Because dunamis means the power to perform a miracle. So you see him opening up blind eyes and the lame walk and, and the deaf hear and, and diseases leave and lepers are healed and the dead are raised and all this. And he's doing that with this anointing of the Holy Spirit and power. But because that word power is dunamis and it means excellence of soul, that means that he wasn't just like, you know, be healed and people would raise up and be healed. He was releasing dunamis and they were getting healed in here first or simultaneously. And then the physical miracle would happen out here. Because think about it. You will prosper and be in health even as, even as, even as your soul prospers, even as your soul prospers, even as. 
So Jesus is releasing Holy Ghost and dunamis power. People are becoming what dunamis means, excellent of soul. And then they're healed in their physical body and everywhere else. So now go back to the demoniac. Jesus delivers him of the spirit of legion. He's, when he does that, he's releasing his anointing, Holy Spirit and dunamis power. So you know he's becoming what dunamis means, excellent of soul. He's getting healed of the tombs. Then it says, and here's proof that he got healed of the tombs. Ready? It says that he sat there clothed and in his right mind. What is the mind? It's part of your soul. Now get this. He says they're clothed and in his right mind. Do you know what the word clothed means? It literally means this. Go look it up in the Thayers. A mantle. So he receives a, oh God. He receives a mantle. What does he do with it? I'm going to read it to you. We're going to go back to Mark 5. In the Amplified Classic, it says he sat there clothed in his right mind, so he got healed in his soul. He receives a mantle. Okay, then it goes like that. It says that he went, the demonic said, I, I want to go with you. I want to go with you, Jesus. Let me go with you. He goes, no, stay here. Go tell your family what the Lord has done for you. And it says this. Then the demoniac departed, and he didn't go home. This is what he did. Ready? And he began to publicly proclaim in the Decapolis, the region of the ten cities, how much Jesus had done for him, and all of the people were astonished and marveled. So what happened? He gets healed of the tombs inside his soul. He receives a mantle of authority for regional authority. And he goes to where? The Decapolis, the region. Oh, God. <laughs> he goes to the region of the ten cities, the Decapolis. And he preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know people received it because it says they all marveled and were astonished. See, you want to go to the next level? You want to have regional authority? Get your soul healed. Stop dwelling among the tombs. Do you understand me? And we've got to... Look, I am not making fun of people. I know that we have gone through pain. We've gone through pain that we should have never had to go through. People put stuff on us. Things have happened in our lives. Things that weren't even people's fault have happened to us. Car accidents or whatever, things have happened. Sometimes a car accident is another person's fault. But we have got to forgive. We have got to repent if we've become offended and bitter. And then we have to ask the Holy Spirit, invade my soul. Heal every wound inside of me. Heal, destroy every tombstone. Remove every negative memory. Cleanse and heal my soul. That's right. And then you will sit there clothed and in your right mind. And you will receive the mantle to go to the next level. And you will go from your little neighborhood church to a regional authority. You know how I got my regional authority? I got this revelation. And then... I went on tour from state to state to state, and every time I'd go to a different state, I discovered that there was something else in me that was in common with Legion, and he would come and attack me, and I mean, this demon makes you sick. When that scripture says he was clothed in his right mind, that word right mind also means this, to be healed of diseases. He would come and give me the flu, he would give me uh, yeast infections, bladder infections, all kinds of diseases and disorders, pain in my body, everything else. And I would know I was being attacked by Legion because I had something in me that was in common with him. And it would happen. I would step. Jesus stepped out of the boat and the spirit of Legion met him. I would step out of the plane. And there that spirit would be there waiting for me. But you know what? It was good. Because now I can kick you. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Okay, so we, we should activate. Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I'm, I'm going to let Katie Souza activate.
you know, because we need to pray. I mean, that's what I, I love about high revelation is the activation. But saints, I'm telling you, we need to recapture the gift of dominion that we have lost. This world is in chaos because we are the kings that Jesus left on the earth and we are not ruling at all because we are so caught up in the drama of the tombstones of what that are in the soul. You know, we can change nations that way. You know, and so I am excited about this broadcast. Boy, that was some, I mean, she dropped some powerful stuff up in here. You know, just some great stuff. You know, and I know people are going to, and some of you are, are going to get healed in the, low, in the audience and in those that are live streaming. By the way, there's a lot of, I'm seeing the live stream chat. It's just, it's just blowing up. You know, I'm already beginning to see questions. So if you have a question for, for me and Katie Souza, again, if you are all streaming, to click on the link that says, ask a question. And then we are going to do our best to answer the question. But I'm going to let Katie Souza activate the healing of the soul right now. And then at the end of that, she's going to do an offering. Because I think that it's important for you to present an offering to the Lord, particularly in the court of heaven, if you want God to release a breakthrough. So I'm sure she'll touch on that as well. But I want to, we want to activate this because we want you to be healed. So we want you to be healed. Whatever you are dealing with that's been holding you back, I tell you, I feel like Katie Day is going to be, fin there are financial destinies that are, that are at stake if we don't get our soul healed. But we get our soul healed. There are people watching us right now that 2020, is, despite of the pandemic, is going to be your greatest financial year in terms of what God does because of this broadcast. Because you decide that, you know what? The devil is a liar. You know, I am not going to have something in common with it with the, the territorial spirit that are ruling the marketplace where my business is at. You know, all different things. So I'm excited. So Kerry, why don't you activate, the, take us maybe, you know, just let God lead you into how you want to do the activation. But, but there's a lot of people online right now and the people in the audience, I'm sure, I'm just really loving this. Okay, so the Bible says in, in um, Leviticus 17 that the blood atoneth for the soul. So if there's sin in your soul, because you've allowed one of the crises that you've gone through, one of the traumas that you've gone through, uh, start to make you complain or talk about a person negatively or judge a person or um, be you know, critical of them or if you've gotten bitter over the traumatic incident or bitter towards that person, right? that the blood atoneth for the soul. Remember what 1 John 1, 9 says, that if we're faithful to confess, that if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us. And I like how it says it in the Amplified Classic. It says, and dismiss our lawlessness. See, right now in the courts of heaven, the devil is accusing you of being bitter towards a person or critical towards a person that hurt you and not forgiving them. They're holding that against you. They're, they're charging you with that. But the blood, it cleanses your soul and it removes the accusation in the court. It does double duty. So we're going to start with that first. And then we're going to move on to dunamis power. But I want you to get quiet. And if you're watching online, I'm not, is it, yeah, if we're watching online right now, I want you to do the same at home. You can get healed right there in your home. I've seen thousands of people healed online of the Spirit of Legion. And there's an angel present right now, and he's sending out angels to people's homes right now to help us with this deliverance. And so, right now, I want you to bow your head, and I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance people that you need to forgive, people that you've gotten bitter at, people that you've gotten... Um, critical or judgmental towards. Remember what Paul said in Corinthians. He said, if you uh, judge yourself, you will not face divine judgment. Okay, so bow your head and let's say, Holy Spirit, show me now what's in my soul. Is there a person I need to forgive? Have I allowed myself to get bitter or critical or judgmental? Show me, Holy Spirit, so I can repent and forgive and let go of these tombstones that have been set up in my soul. In Jesus' name. 
Now, I just want you to meditate and pray with the Lord right now as we sit here in, in his presence right now with the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit brings to your mind someone, start forgiving them. Start repenting for being offended or bitter at them. Okay? Step into it. Step into the breakthrough. know as you're saying these prayers the blood's being released to cleanse your soul but it's also being heard in the court of heaven right now to erase that record of the accusations against you it's doing double duty right now So you're setting yourself up to get free right now. You're setting yourself up into that place of authority by letting go of that pain and letting go of that hate, letting go of that bitterness. This is a moment that will bring you into the next level. It's so worth it to let go. And I'm really speaking to a lot of people online right now. You don't want to let go. You think you have the right to be angry and mad and bitter at people. And the Lord is saying, do you want, do you want to break free into that place of, of fullness and manifestation and promise that God has for you? Then you have to repent and forgive. You have to repent and forgive. So let's pray together. Just pray after me. Say, Lord. And you can put in the name of the person as we pray along just to customize it. Or people. Okay? Just say, I step into the court of heaven now to receive grace and mercy in my time of need. As I stand here testifying and meeting the enemy and facing the accusations against me, I decree that as I loose the blood and the Holy Spirit and dunamis power, that not only will my lawlessness be dismissed, but my soul will be healed and cleansed. So right now in the name of Jesus, I admit all the accusations are true. And I humbly respond with repentance. I repent for not forgiving anyone that's ever hurt me so I do this now I forgive every single person that has ever injured me attacked me talked about me used me criticized me gossiped against me 
I forgive them now. Anyone that's abused me or molested me or stolen from me, I forgive them now. And I repent. I repent for getting critical, for judging, for speaking bitter words. For being offended. Wash me, Lord. Wash my record clean. And wash my soul. Lord, have your blood. Remove every tombstone that I've been dwelling on. I've been dwelling on the pain of my past. Thinking about it all the time. Rehearsing it and re-rehearsing it, talking about it, meditating on it. I want it removed. I repent for holding on to it. I decree your blood is doing what the Bible says, atoning for my soul and cleansing my conscience. I receive the power of the blood now in Jesus' name. Okay, now. Stand there with your hands up. Just say, now, Lord, I know the Holy Spirit is my advocate. He's my counselor. He's representing me in this court case. But he's also healing my soul simultaneously as I stand in this court to face these charges. And I ask... That the Holy Spirit would adjudicate my case, but also release dunamis power into every part of my soul. Holy Spirit, I give you permission to invade my mind, to wipe out, to fill in, and to heal every tombstone and every location of every cemetery in my mind with dunamis power. Cause my mind to be what dunamis means, excellent of soul. I'm like the demoniac. I'm sitting here clothed and in my right mind. I decree it. My mind is being healed. Every stronghold is being demolished. Every tombstone is being removed. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you heal my will. Remove every tombstone, every bad memory that's controlling my will and making me choose to do the wrong things, to pick the wrong men, to buy the wrong house, to start the wrong business, to how to conduct my life. My will is being healed now by the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. My will is excellent of soul. And Holy Spirit, invade my emotions. Wipe out every memory, every trauma, every crisis, every tombstone, that's negatively controlling my emotions. I decree right now, my emotions are becoming excellent of soul. I will be at peace in the storm. I will be filled with the fruits of the Spirit. Peace, kindness, loving, gentleness, patience. Perseverance, long suffering. I will be full of the Holy Spirit's fruit. I will not display the fruit of a tombstone. Because Holy Spirit and Dunus power are healing me now in Jesus' name. Now I need you to start praising God for like one minute. Come on. Praising God for like one minute.
on, keep going, keep going, keep going. And you at home, keep praising the Lord. That's part of the breakthrough process. Start thanking him. Because you, you've been actually angry about everything you've been through. But as you start thanking the Lord, the devil's going to have to come out. Come on, keep going. Come on, church, stir yourself up. Come on, keep going. It's happening right now. Your deliverance is happening right now. Pray in the spirit if you have to. Yes, pray in the spirit fiercely at home. Come on. This is part of your breakthrough right now. We're not just having this to tell you some fun stuff or some revelation. We're having this, this meeting right now with Dr. Miles to get you free. Stir it up, stir it up, pray in the Spirit. Or if you don't pray in the Spirit, keep on thanking the Lord. I see the angel moving. I see him moving. He's delivering people even at home. Come on, keep praying. Breakthrough's right here. Come on, breakthrough's right here. Legion's coming out. I command him to come out right now. 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 I command him to come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of those tombs because they're no longer there. Right now, you have to go. Go. Go in the name of Jesus. You will come out from whence you came in. You will come out from the place for where you first were allowed in. You will come out of that memory because the memory is completely washed away, completely healed. In the name of Jesus now. In the name of Jesus now. Somebody, you've been on a soapbox. I hear the Lord say, you've been on a soapbox. Your life is like a soap. But the Lord says, you've made it like a soap because you keep on rehearsing all this stuff. Like that's all they do on the soap operas. They just talk about all the stuff that's happened. I'm not making fun of you. But the Lord says, stop doing that. Don't do it ever again. You're coming out of that soap opera right now. Can we praise God right now? Can we praise him? Some of you right now, you've got water draining out of your eyes or out your nose or in your ears or down the back of your throat. That's a sign you've been delivered a legion. If you've had that happen, please chat in online. If anybody in here in this room has had it, can you wave at me? 
Yes? Wave at me really big. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people alone in the room. There, there are nine people right now. Anybody else? Yes, ten people right there. It's happening right. It's starting right now. People are being delivered of legion right now in the room. Thank you, Lord. If you are online and you're being healed and you had a water expulsion, that is one of the signs. It's not the only sign, but one of the signs. You'll have unusual water drainage. I'll chat in. And if not, I, I encourage you to watch this whole message again because it will dig through the layers in your soul and get you healed.